Your new or existing home is one of your most important assets. Yet too many people rely on sites, shows, and tips from people who are not in the real estate business when making important decisions. It's time to get real and trust a professional. This is Real Real Estate Today with host Deb Tomorrow. In this series, you'll learn about making smart decisions when it comes to buying a home, selling a home, or even staying in the home you're in. Now, here is your host, Realtor Deb Tomorrow. Hello. Welcome to Real Real Estate Today. I'm your host, Deb Tomorrow, and you can always find us on Facebook, Deb Tomorrow Realtor. I know I need to get on the Instagram. I think about that every day. It keeps me up at night. I may have to ask our guest today because she's a little younger than I am, and she may be, I don't know, she may have skipped over the Instagram and gone straight to the Snapchat. Uh, I'm joined today by Brittany Libert, who is almost a regular on the show. Yeah, it's my fourth time. Fourth time. Not counting. Not counting what? How many times I've been on the show? Oh, you're not counting. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. Um, and there have been reruns, too. So technically, you've been on more. Several times. Right. Radio exactly. star. So Brittany is a, is a good friend, and she is a Green County yeah. Regional title. She actually did a closing for me this morning and one yesterday. Um, but she's actually here on a different purpose today, so that's kind of exciting. But So do you do Instagram, or do you do Snapchat? Or do I you do, do both of those. And you do Facebook, too. I do. No Twitter. No Twitter. Nope. Do do. Like I said, I'm not going to reveal ages, but she's a good 20 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. um, so she's 12. And <laughs> uh, and so do most people of your age do not do Twitter? Uh, no, I think most people my age do, do Twitter. Twitter. I did it for a little bit, and I just – it was a lot. I didn't yeah, want to be a, a part lot. of it. Yeah, The Instagram's a lot too. Yeah, but it's just pictures. So you just go around and take pictures of your life and then post them? My cats, yeah. I, I have a mental block, and I'm pretty sure that I need therapy for this, but I just can't believe that anyone cares enough about me. So <laughs> like, except, you know, my dogs. The what? The puppies. Right, right, Rachel saying the puppies. Yeah. Um, yes, I do post pictures of the puppies and cute videos of the puppies. Did everyone see the cute video of my puppy last weekend? Mm -hmm. Talking, yeah. Yes, he was unhappy with the snow that we got on April 9th. So. <laughs> um, well, we are going to talk today about something near and dear to Brittany's heart, which is Greene County, which is where she lives. Yes. Uh, and so I think it's going to be a really interesting show. But before that, I had something else I wanted to talk to you about, because I know you missed out on something really big this past weekend. What? The Trading Spaces reboot. Yes, I did miss it. And so we have always been joking because Brittany, you were super excited when they mm. said Trading Spaces was coming back. I love Trading Spaces. And so I watched it, but you don't have cable. Mm -hmm. Not because you can't get it in Greene County. No. You can. You just choose not to. I, I, yeah, I just have the Netflix and Hulu. So you, I think if you get TLC Go, is something they keep talking about. Maybe I can get the app on my Fire Stick. Yeah. I don't know how that works. I just followed into it. Trading Spaces on Facebook, and they keep talking about watch this on TLC Go, and I think there's a way to do that on a computer, but uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'll get to the bottom of that when you I get, get home. You get right on that. It was yeah. really good, but they did like an hour um, intro reunion kind of show before, so mm -hmm. they had all the designers um, and Paige and the Carpenters on talking about old episodes when Hildy put straw on the walls and all kinds of crazy design stuff. What did she have to say about that? Nothing. She's like, I stand by my design decisions. <laughs> Literally glued. So this one, I guess I can't tell you what she did this one because she was one of the designers this time. Was it out there? It was out there. Okay. Yeah. I'll have I was to watch. a little unimpressed. And she also fell off a bike and that was kind of funny. But um, oh. <laughs> um, but they were talking, Genevieve, who's always been one of my favorites, I have a little bit of a girl crush on Genevieve, <laughs> who doesn't, right, was talking about the impact that the show had. And it ran from, I think, like 2000 to like 2008, something like that. And um, and they were talking about how the show, I never realized this, the show originally started as in an after school time slot. And it made me think of you because I think you were yeah. saying you come home from school and yeah. you watch Trading Spaces. I would watch that all the time. Yeah. And so they said that that was really how they got their start was this after school crowd of kids would watch it. And the parents would kind of go, what is this you're watching? And then she said they got moved. They got so popular. They got moved to Saturday night. And they were like, well, our lives are different now. Yeah. Uh, and so I thought, I, so I was thinking of you the whole time because I'm like, they're talking about Brittany. Um, and then they were talking about how they've kind of inspired a new generation of designers too. So it was really cute. Everything was pretty much the same. The only big difference is they get $2,000 now instead of $1,000. So if you haven't seen Trading Spaces, the, the concept is that uh, neighbors 
uh, two houses. They switch houses for 48 hours, two days, and they redesign a room for their neighbor and then reveal and hope, hope that they like it. And they don't always, and they have two days, they have, um, a designer to help them and they have $2,000 instead of $1,000. It used to be 1,000, but inflation and all. Mm. And the other big change is that they have two carpenters now. They do. So it used to be one carpenter who would split between the two houses, uh, between the two projects. And that was a lot of work. So they had Carter and Ty they on for this show. They each have their own. Yeah. So that, that was another difference. But other than that, it was pretty much the same. And it was just a sweet, you know, fun show. It was, it was just, it was a good time. I'm going to have to look at and it. And a shout out to Eurus for letting me actually watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you for letting me watch this. Nice. Um, and then I had to watch Long Island Medium premiere from another room because. He doesn't uh, like that? No, he doesn't really get that. And he's also, you know, they're separating. And so he's, we should make this a reality TV show today instead of about real estate. <laughs> Long Island Medium and her husband are separating and Eurus is all Team Larry. And I think I'm Team Larry too. Karen's Team Larry. So we've had all these discussions. So Oh, I've never watched it. <sighs> it's a good show. I cry every time. <laughs> all right. So what are we talking about today? Uh, so I may have mentioned once or twice, and Brittany, you've probably seen this as you are an integral part of the real estate world uh, in your day-to-day life, that uh, the real estate market is crazy right now. Um, mm-hmm. And that means that in Monroe County and a lot of other areas, we're really having trouble finding affordable housing. Actually, I had a closing this morning, and the realtor was from Lawrence County. Um, she works primarily in Bedford and Mitchell, and she asked me, she goes, are things as cr- crazy up here in Monroe County as they are in Lawrence County? So I was like, yes, <laughs> I guess it's everywhere. You know, even the counties that we traditionally think of as being, you know, a little bit slower market are still seeing the housing shortages. Um, and I know up here, finding affordable housing, which in Monroe County is really anything under 200, is getting really, really difficult. Um, homes are selling for a lot over list price. I'm hearing people offer ten thousand dollars over list price and not get it um you know and in some markets like san francisco that's entirely normal (laughs) here it's not quite so normal um and so as a result of all this craziness and the shortage of homes one strategy that some of my buyers are coming up with are to explore other areas that they hadn't previously considered so right now i actually have clients that are buying in green county owen county lawrence county we closed that one this morning and morgan county even mm-hmm. um and and mostly it's because you know there are some more affordable options the homes are still going really quickly but they are more affordable so, um, you know, for example, in Morgan County, my clients buying a house, it's under a hundred thousand in Monroe County, it would probably be a hundred and thirty thousand dollar house. It still went, you know, really, really fast, like first day on the market. So you still have to move really quickly, but you can get more for your money. Um, so I thought it would be good to explore some of these counties and to learn a little bit more about living there and talk about the idea of expanding your options. And also just to talk about, you know, how do you sort of start to investigate these other areas, especially if you've lived in Monroe County for a long time? Um, and I know, you know, I came here as a college student and lived here about seven years and then left for about 10 and then came back. And honestly, you know, there's a lot of people that come to school here and then stay. But you never even like cross over to the west side of town when you're a student. And you certainly never go to Greene County or Owen County or explore any of those other areas. So it can feel a little bit like moving to a completely new city. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how you can, what resources are out there for learning about those areas. And next week we're going to have um, a couple of guests on from Owen County to talk to us about Owen County just sort of as a, another option too. Um, so that's the plan um, and I want to talk about, Brittany, you're not a native Greene Countyan. I am not from Greene County. No. I just moved there three years ago. So you've been in Greene County for three years. And so tell us where you came from and how you got to Greene County. I moved to Greene County from Evansville, Indiana, and that is a very large city. And I came there because my mom opened a title company and I was going there to work for her and run the company. And you lived in Evansville pretty much your whole life? My whole life. Same house. Same house. every Everything. Yeah. Never moved. And so, and I love this because I just think you're such a, a gutsy uh, woman 
because, you know, I, I, we always make fun of you because you're so much younger than us, but we consider you totally a peer and uh, certainly older than your years. Um, and it's not like she's 19. I mean, you're 20. 26. 26. Fresh off the parents' health insurance. Plan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we remember how old Brittany is. How far removed are you from dad's health insurance? <laughs> Two months. Okay. Um, but um, you really jumped in there and got yourself acclimated. And I don't know. I mean, at first, were you kind of like, what the heck? Yeah, so it was very different at first. There's two stoplights in your um, town. In my you town, you live in Bloomfield. Yes, we're going to talk about the geography and towns and stuff here in a minute. Everything closed a little bit early, so it was just hard for me to adjust from living in a big city. Yeah, but everybody's so friendly. Yeah. So the first week I was in my office, people came to invite me to Rotary lunches and take me to all these organizations to be a part of the community, which I think is really awesome because I think we all have that fear of you know like being judged or. You know, people looking at you as an outsider, I have to tell a story. I lived, my um, my father got transferred. We we were living in Indianapolis. I was going to high school there. And my father got transferred to West Texas, which is like, hopefully I have no one listening in West Texas. It's a barren, desolate <laughs> place. Um, Midland, which is where George Bush is from and where baby Jessica fell in the well. Okay. So you probably don't remember that. Nope. That was 1989 or something. So uh, before before my time. <laughs> uh, baby Jessica fell in a well. It was a whole big thing, right? Rachel remembers it. <laughs> Anybody over 30 <laughs> probably remembers baby Jessica falling in the well. But, um, And we would walk around town. I met up with a girl who was from Chicago, and I was from Indiana, and we were in West Texas. So she and I clicked uh, and bonded, and we were working at like a local community theater and whatnot. But People would just look at us and say, y'all are not from around here, are you? Like they could just <laughs> tell. And they were friendly, but they were a little cautious. And it was not, uh, you know, it was an interesting experience, I'll say. I have no desire to go back. So it sounds like that was not. It depends on what, what you do, people might say that. So like I didn't understand why everybody waved at me. <laughs> and I didn't wave back. So they, you're not from here, are you? Because now I know you just wave at everybody. Wave That's what you everybody. do. Everybody like waves. when you're driving or just walking around? Either or- one. You just, Somebody passes by your storefront hi. with the title company yep. and wave, and you just wave back. Yeah, and if they don't, they're probably not from here. Well, that's how. so it's a test. Yes, that's how you can test the waters. So you are officially one of them now because you wave. I am, and we I can should. catch myself doing that in Evansville, driving by people waving, yes. and they just look at me like I'm crazy <laughs> because nobody there does that, or here in Bloomington for that matter. So now you get Evansville, and they're like, you're not from around here. Well, yeah, they we don't should, know what I'm doing. We should have like a cheat sheet, like a Green County cheat sheet of like, here's do these things. So that you appear, you know, fit in. Yeah, to fit in. Because I think everybody's got an opportunity. You know, I think people in the community have an obligation to be welcoming, Mm -hmm. but people going into the community have an obligation to sort of understand how the community works and find a way to still be themselves, but to fit in a little bit. And I think that's what you did. And I think that's what's made you so successful. So you're actually the president of Miss Miss President of the Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. Yes, I am. So I've lived there three years, April 1st. Yeah. And this is my third year on the board. Within six months, I was asked to be on the board of the chamber. And this would be my last year, second year as president. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I loved, I was looking at, uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but a Green County Foundation. And I was looking at who were the members of the Green County Foundation board. And the backgrounds were amazingly varied. There was a guy from Austria who teaches at Ivy Tech here in uh, Bloomington, but lives in Green County. And he's on the board of the foundation. And so it, I think that Green County really is a lot more diverse and a lot more welcoming mm-hmm. than some people might give it credit for. Yeah, and we have Crane yeah. there. So that We're brings in people that. from all over. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, everywhere. Right. All right, well, let's go to break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about facts and figures about Green County um, so we can help you sort of figure out where the heck it is. Uh, and then we'll get into some of the fun stuff because there are really some really amazing and cool things uh, going on in Green County. So stick around. You're listening to Real Real Estate Today, your home for smart real estate. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com Are you interested in buying or selling a home? Not sure what the next step is? Deb can help. Go to realrealestatetoday.com and click on Start Here. You'll be asked a few simple questions and Deb will personally contact you to help answer your real estate questions and connect you with a realtor in her personal nationwide network of realtors. 
So even if you aren't in Deb's service area, you're guaranteed to find a good match wherever you are. Visit realrealestatetoday.com. Are you finding your frequency? It can be described as that space between failure and success. It's the future of digital media. It's finding your voice. It's engaging topics, content, and ideas. Jeff and Ryan discuss the digital media space and all of its aspects. It's about making the mistakes, taking the chances, summoning the intestinal fortitude to step out of your comfort zone, and discovering what you can accomplish when you decide to try, decide to learn, decide that you have something to say, and find your frequency. Why? Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Variety Channel. You count. Tune into Interrevolutionary Radio and join the spontaneous wave of people all over the planet who, like you, are changing our world from the inside out. Follow the movement. Meet guests who are shaking things up. Call in and gain insights and courage to empower your own voice. Large or small, your part counts. So join us. Co-hosted by Helen Hillix, Todd Benton, and Chris Reeves. Interrevolutionary Radio airs live every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern, on the Voice America Variety Channel. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. You are listening to Real Real Estate Today. To reach Deb tomorrow or with questions and comments about the show, please send an email to Deb at realrealestatetoday.com. That's Deb at realrealestatetoday.com. Now, back to this week's program. All right. Welcome back to Real Real Estate Today. I'm your host, Deb Tomorrow. So if you're listening from afar, I know I'm big in Poland. Not the count of this town. There is a town, Poland, Indiana, and Owen County. We'll talk about that next week. Um, but it, we're talking today, you know, we're based, I'm based out of Monroe County, um, and I work in some of the surrounding counties somewhat. We're finding more and more people are going out to some of the surrounding counties because the market in Monroe County is pretty rough, uh, and there people are finding more for their money in some of the surrounding counties. Um, but I think that this show has value for anybody listening that might be thinking about exploring new areas as we talk about what are the things to think about and what are the things to look for and um, ideas and suggestions. So um, don't turn off. Keep listening. So we're visiting today with Brittany Libert, who is the president of Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. And so she's just kind of giving us a perspective because she lives in Greene County. You're a homeowner in Greene County. It'll be one year and one week. Is it? We're going to have to have a party. Yeah. I know. That's awesome. We'll have to do something. And uh, done tons and tons of work on your house. Yes. So that's exciting. And trying to get some grass to grow. I planted grass seed for the first time this weekend. Really grass seed? Well, the, <laughs> I raked the whole yard, spread all this seed. I'm doing the little finger quotes. Yeah. And I, it was not seed. It was fertilizer for your grass. Yep. So I had to go buy seed. So you're fertilizing grass that isn't there. Yeah, I had to but go. But when you put the grass down, it'll be in good shape. Yeah. Okay, I just had to teach you about that. All right, so let's <laughs> talk about some Greene County facts. So Greene County is um, pretty much directly um, west of Monroe County. Uh, and a little bit south. So kind of there's two counties that are touching uh, Monroe County on the west side, and it's Owen County, and then below that is Greene County. Um, there are, I guess in terms of the county seat is Bloomfield. Yes. And that's where you um, where you live, mm-hmm. and you work right across the street from the courthouse. Right and you just said school. whenever there's a good story, somebody gets in trouble, y'all run over to the courthouse and pull up the... And we get the affidavit <laughs> so we can get all the details. Get all the details of what's going on, <laughs> uh, which I love. Um, and then I think the biggest city is probably Linton. Yes, I believe, yeah. I pulled up some popu- pop- populations, and uh, numbers don't really mean anything to me, but Linton has 5,200 people. Bloomfield has 2,300 um, the entire county has about 32,000. So I think probably the majority of the county is a little more rural, not necessarily living inside the yeah. city limits or the town limits. Um, but Bloomfield, Linton, Worthington, I think, is another good size town-ish, 1,400 people. Yeah. And then Jasonville, which I've never been to Jasonville. I don't really know that I've actually been there or drove through it. But but Jasonville is where Shackamack state park is i think yeah i think so there's there's a park of like a big state park kind of thing going mm-hmm. on over there um so i wanted to also do some comparisons um 
so in I guess from Bloomington, the way that we in the real estate world kind of split it up is that there's Eastern Green. I kind of split it up by school district. So there's Eastern Green, which is basically what it sounds like. It is like the eastern <laughs> portion of the county. It's the closest to Bloomington. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you know, that's an area that we work in a lot and sort of consider, you know, part of, of Monroe County. Um, and I don't mean that to take away from Greene County. I always feel bad about it, but I found this. Did you know this? That, you know, the Census Bureau defines metropolitan areas and they define uh, the Bloomington, Indiana metropolitan statistical area as defined by the United States Census Bureau as an area comprising three counties, Monroe, Greene, and Owen. I so the not. Census Bureau lumps us all together. Wow. So I don't feel so bad now yeah. about lumping us all together. And in the real estate world, we are now all part of the same board of realtors, which is really exciting. That just happened last year. Mm -hmm. um, Green County always had its own board of realtors that wasn't very big um, and didn't have access to quite as many resources. Um, and Monroe County, we would typically include Owen County. And then this Eastern Green section kind of ended up being no man's land. Um, so when you needed to list a house in Eastern Green, did you go with the Green County? realtor or did you go with a Monroe County realtor and there was kind of this overlap um, so we're all now one which I think is great um, and I hope the Green County people think it's great too because we love having them um, the per capita I was going to do some comparisons per capita income this is all 2010 census data because that's our last uh, census Monroe County was $21,882 per person per capita income and Green County was $20,676 so only about a thousand lower so I think that's one of, I don't know if you get the feeling that people think Greene County is a lot poorer, I guess. Yeah, I think people think that, but. I don't think the numbers are really showing that. Yeah. Um, median household income in 2010 um, showed 38000 for Monroe County and 41000 for Greene County. Wow. So it might be that Greene County's households aren't quite as big, but um, uh, population of Greene County is 32,441. Compare that with Monroe County. Do you know what Monroe County's population is? No clue. 144,000. I was going to guess like 90. But nobody's ever really sure if that includes students or not. I oh. think it includes students because when they go away, it's, you know, I don't think we go from 140 to 200 when students come here. I think we go from 140 to 80 when mm -hmm. students go home in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, Green County is 543 square miles. And Monroe County, compared to Monroe County, that is th uh, 395 square miles. So Greene County is bigger. Mm -hmm. But then when you do the math, which I did for everyone, Greene County has 59 people per square mile. You want to take a guess on Monroe County? 366 people per square mile. Wow. So it is a different living environment. Yes. You know, it just is fewer people. Um, and then I found this really f cool fun fact. Did you give me that back, Rachel? I gave her the paper so she could post it online because I started reading about it and I got completely distracted with what my uh, what I was actually supposed to be doing and putting the show together because there is a thing called mean center of population. The mean center of the United States population. Uh, the concept is used, um, it's described as a balance point. So basically it says it's that point at which um, if you flattened out the United States completely and then each person was a point with like a weight, it's like, see, each person weighed one ounce, then there's a center where this entire country is balanced. So the number of people that are above you and to the left of you and to the right of you and below you are all the same number. And it's just that balance point. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's really weird. Why they do that, I don't know. But, <laughs> well, because it tells you where population is moving and going. So they plot this every 10 years from um, the census information. Mm -hmm. So in 1790, if you can believe it, 1790, it was in Baltimore. Wow. So okay. which is like, or 23 miles east of Baltimore. So Baltimore is like right on the coast, right? So basically it's saying there were more people in that 23 miles th than there were to the entire West Coast. 
but what yeah. wasn't that when we were developing like well yeah okay. but nobody was out on the west coast sense. yet right yeah. so it just has con- been moving uh westward and so in 1910 it was in monroe county it was actually on north rogers street I, give me the longitude and latitude wow. so i pulled it up and i was like where is this it's at ninth and rogers in monroe county in 1920 it moved into owen county eight miles southeast of spencer and in 1930 in green county uh three miles northeast of linton so there you go huge claim to fame for green county was that it was the mean center of the united states population do you want to know where it is now I do. It's in Missouri. Texas County, Missouri. Hmm. So still moving westward. So more and more people moving to the west. Anyways, okay. I just thought that was fascinating. Here's another interesting number that I pulled up. So, you know, I work, I own property in Salisbury, which is a little town, I guess. There's a store and a fire station and a post office. And the sculpture trails. And the sculpture trails. We're going to talk mm-hmm. about that because that's way cool. Yep. Um, in Salisbury. And that's a little town and area of Eastern Green. So we work a lot in there. You know, I own property in Salisbury. Um, Salisbury is 15 miles to the Monroe County Courthouse. If you go down southern Monroe County to Eagle Point, which is like on Lake Monroe, a lot of people know Eagle Point, that's 13.2 miles to the courthouse. Oh. So when you think about it that way, yeah, that's not, it's not that far, right? Not at all. And then I pulled this up too. If you live in Indianapolis, from Carmel to Monument Circle downtown is 15.8 miles. Mm-hmm. People do that drive every day. Yeah. Right? So I think that, and you've been to Bloomington twice today already. Yep. And how long does, you're in Bloomfield, so it takes you a little bit longer, 40 minutes? Yep. Depending on what side of town, it's 35 to 45 minutes. Yeah. Our construction doesn't help much. No. But, uh, so, you know, I definitely think logistically it's worth considering. Um, I also pulled up, before we go to break, I want to pull this up, um, some other comparisons because um, I thought this was really interesting. There's a, a place called Sperling's Best Places, and uh, um, it lists sort of different facts and figures um, about d- counties. And so I was comparing Monroe County to Greene County, and they said the average commute in Monroe County is 27.67 minutes. Which is a little crazy, but, you know, if you live on the west side of town, you work on the east side of town, I'll tell you, I mean, now it's tough. And in Greene County, average commute is 28.76. Uh, my commute to work is less than yeah, one I minute. Know. <laughs> it used to be negative I used to live seconds. in the in office. The, same, yeah, so. the, um, the median home price in Monroe County was, is, uh, according to this website, 164800 And in Greene County, 79300 and that's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean the $164,000 house is the same as the $79,000 house in Greene County, but there are just certainly more opportunities. Um, this website also says that compared to the rest of the country, Greene County's cost of living is about 20% lower than the U.S. average. Monroe County, it's about 6% lower. So you just certainly have some pickup there. But on the other hand, uh, so we want to weigh the pros and cons. Home appreciation over the past 10 years in Monroe County is about 14%, according to this website. I can't say that these are true, but that's what the website says. And it says in Greene County, it's been about 4%. So one of the big things is important to understand is that you are getting, it may feel like a bargain when you're buying a house in a a neighboring county because the prices tend to be lower, but it's not like the second you buy the house, it then appreciates to Monroe County values. You're still in that county and you're still in that location. Um, and so you know, your, and the, your appreciation is going to be dictated by what's going on in that county. So that's something to consider for sure, but I think it's worth um, taking into account. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the fun stuff that goes on in Greene County because there's actually a lot that goes on. I know Brittany's always, she's always doing stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's not always just in here in Bloomington. It's like she's driving over to Bloomington, but she's always doing stuff. Um, so stick around. You're listening to Real Real Estate Today, your home for smart real estate. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. Are you interested in buying or selling a home? Not sure what the next step is? Deb can help. Go to realrealestatetoday.com and click on Start Here. 
You'll be asked a few simple questions, and Deb will personally contact you to help answer your real estate questions and connect you with a realtor in her personal nationwide network of realtors. So even if you aren't in Deb's service area, you're guaranteed to find a good match wherever you are. Visit realrealestatetoday.com. In the spirit of Have Couch, Will Travel, Dr. Carol Lieberman creates a haven of sanity in an increasingly insane world. Each day we are bombarded with news of events that have never crossed our wildest nightmares. Society is spiraling out of control and everyone is reeling from it. But now there's an answer. The best way to keep sane in this insane world is to tune in to Dr. Carol's Couch on Voice America. Dr. Carol, a certified media psychiatrist, will broadcast live from her Beverly Hills office every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Call or log in and get help with whatever is sending you reeling whenever you need a soothing voice to calm and advise you. That's Dr. Carol's Couch every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time here on America's Voice, voiceamerica.com. What if there was a radio show that could demonstrate how we can cut your taxes in half without diminishing needed government services? One that could explain how to create tens of millions of jobs at no cost to taxpayers, as well as fantastic yet easily affordable health care. Side effects include cutting crime rates nationwide, providing better education for our children, international peace and harmony, and protecting your private personal data from government intrusion. Tune in to Libertarians Working for you with Arvind Vora, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time on Voice America Variety. Tune in to The Patricia Raskin Show on VoiceAmerica.com every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time and 11 a.m. Pacific Time. This is the program that helps you turn obstacles into opportunities, challenges into solutions, and find answers to tough questions with the award-winning powerhouse voice of radio, Patricia Raskin. So tune in and call in to The Patricia Raskin Show, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time and 11 a.m. Pacific Time, right here on the Voice America Variety Channel. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com You are listening to Real Real Estate Today. To reach Deb tomorrow or with questions and comments about the show, please send an email to Deb at realrealestatetoday.com. That's Deb at realrealestatetoday.com. Now, back to this week's program. All right. Welcome back to Real Real Estate Today. I'm your host, Deb Tomorrow. We are talking today about what it's like to live in Greene County um, as more and more buyers are finding that they need to branch out uh, to, from their target areas to find some more affordable options in this crazy seller's market that we're in. So we were talking in the last segment about logistics and sort of the, the nuts and bolts numbers of Green County. But then I will kind of say, well, but what is it really like? I mean, if someone were to say to you, Brittany, like, what's Green County like? What is Green County like? What would you say? Well, I mean, it's quiet for one. Yeah. So it's rural. So I've never... There's not, I don't know how to explain that. I guess it's a quiet town. Yeah. Um, or at least where I live. Yeah. Um, the people are really, really nice. So I've never, like if I got a flat tire in Greene County, somebody yeah. would stop to help me and yeah. that wouldn't be unheard of. And you wouldn't be terrified for your life. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, everybody comes together yeah. for everything, whether it's good or bad. Right. Well, I love that you answer this question about people because I answer it by like, terrain <laughs> it just tells you like how much of a people person I guess I'm not because um, if someone said to me oh, what's Green County like I'd be like it's so gorgeous in May there's nothing like driving through Green County in May it's beautiful especially eastern Green County is like super hilly and there's mm-hmm. haulers um, and what they are they're haulers I that's know what they are right and there's bottoms I don't know it's a place American called bottoms. American bottoms yeah. they're not talking about your back end um, <laughs> But then you get to the western end, and it starts to flatten out a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're getting into coal mining country. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit different. But it's really, really beautiful um, in that sense. Um, and then on the very south edge, you mentioned this before, is Crane, which is a huge naval base. Yeah, it's a naval base, which is what in the middle of Indiana is a naval base. It's mm-hmm. kind of weird. But it's actually a warfare war. I don't know. They make things that explode, and all of my clients have very high security clearances, so we always have to play it ahead when they're getting a mortgage because it takes a while. Yeah. But, yeah, I have clients who are like, well, I blow things up. and 
Yeah, a lot of people out there. Yeah, so and they Department employ Defense. thousands and thousands and thousands. Yes. So that's interesting. All right, so tell me about some of the fun stuff to do in Greene County. I mean, I know fun stuff isn't necessarily everyday life, but I think that it's good to hear that it's a vibrant and active community. Yeah, so there are lots of events that go on that you would have in a city still. So we have um, the Tulip Trestle, which is – one of the largest still in use train trestles in, I think, I know Indiana, I don't know if it's the whole country, but mm-hmm. I mean, they have like a 5K every year. It's one of the hilliest 5Ks in the area. That was coming up in May and I almost asked you if you wanted to do it this year and then I thought, oh wait, that's the hilly one. Yeah, I am going to do it. I found okay. a friend to walk it with me this year. I couldn't find anybody that was willing <laughs> to take it on with me last year, but that's really unique. Um, we saw farmers markets and they're mm-hmm. actually really great farmers markets because they're all local farmers yeah. and there's honey, all that kind of good stuff that you could want yeah. um, and homemade crafts and things we have the goose pond we have the which is a a marsh with bird watching and hunting and wildlife and people come from all over for that the fourth of july parade in linton is one of indiana's largest uh, parades and that's pretty popular and then my favorite thing in green county is the sculpture trails which is yeah and tell me about that because you went to an event there last weekend so yeah the old tobacco barn there in salisbury with the sculpture trails does um they call them barn party workshops and there are there's one last weekend for a barn quilt i did one on saturday for a spoon ring and we so went you out made there. a ring right yeah we, out of an old spoon yeah i've lost it already since sunday but <laughs> i don't know where it's i think it's in my glove from doing the yard work on sunday <laughs> i haven't figured that out yet but <laughs> Um, so yeah, that that's my favorite place. It's, so what is this? What kind of sculptures? I assume there's it's a garden with sculptures. It's right? a yeah, it's a trail out in the woods, and there's two miles of trails, and there are sculptures that people from all over the world have made and put out in outside outside. And yeah. there's someone that'll give you guided tours if you'd like, right? Yes, you can res- book a guided tour with any of the residents. There's people, interns that there's one from like Czechoslovakia or something right now. Oh wow, that's staying there for a year. The resident currently, he's from Boston. He's been there three years interning, and this year he's a resident. So and he's an artist resident, right? Yes. So they, because my mom does this because she's an artist too. So she does artist in residence things where they'll go and live on a property and mm-hmm. see what inspires them and, you know, create art. And yeah, that's that what they do. And they camp out, they have cabins for them all, and they come stay all summer. She said they're doing, I mean, tutorials or workshop things at one in the morning sometimes. I mean, they're just working all summer long. That's crazy. And I know they did some on, um, blacksmithing or forging or some metal smithing things yeah. last year I think yeah they had some stuff I didn't get to go to those yeah. but they do like painting ones as well so the barn quilt yeah. is like a big painted piece of wood that you put on your barn That's they so kind of cool. they're I really pretty about that but is it a quilt and you're like no it's this thing it's a piece of wood <laughs> it's a piece of wood um yeah they have a lot of really cool stuff to do out there and then they have the yoho general store that you can visit while you're there as well and get something to eat yeah yoho is really cool um if you're familiar and if you're from monroe county you've heard of cook um the cook company and um they have some they've always had car um carl cook is the the son of bill cook uh, and Gail Cook and Bill and Gail had uh, a huge interest in historic preservation. And so they have done various projects all over the state, including French Lick and uh, some down on the river uh, close to Kentucky. Um, but they took this general store in Salisbury, Indiana, Eastern Green County, and kind of restored it and brought it back to its glory and brought ice cream back in. And it's a great thing for the people who live in Salisbury. One of the jokes, you know, we have our ways when we list properties in Salisbury. It used to be, we used to laugh about it. How far is it from Walmart on the west side? That was like in every <laughs> listing, like it's six miles from Walmart kind of thing. Now I'm always like, how far are you from Yoho's? Because that's where milk is. Like if you need milk or bread, you go to Yo- and gas, you go to Yoho's. Mm-hmm. It's like it's a mile from Yoho's. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And ice cream. Um, and so what about businesses? Um, I know we think of Greene County as being very rural, um, but there are some actually there, when you and I were talking and we were getting ready for the show, I learned some things that I didn't realize were out there in Greene County. So we have the high lift Jack factory. And so all the high lift Jacks that are made are made in Bloomfield, Indiana. And you go, what high lift Jack. But when you see the logo, you're like, Oh, high lift Jack. Yeah. 
that was what Brittany had to pull it up on her phone and she showed it to me and I was like, oh yeah, I know that. Yeah. So they make all these, they're jacks for... I think everything. Everything. They've got some that like go on your Jeep. They've got some that we auction off that are taller than me almost. Like, yeah. I, you know, I don't you know. You use jack supports for like homes and crawl spaces and all mm-hmm. kinds of things. And, uh, and so, yeah, trust me when you see it, you'll know what it is. Yeah. And then we also have Metal Tech, which is, um, I don't really, they do, they make parts for like Chevy. Okay. So, like, I think Chevy Corvettes, every single one of them has some part that's made at huh. Metal Technologies. And they're a really large company. Um, they're in Bed. I think they're, yeah, they're in Bedford as well. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of the other businesses we talked about. Yeah, I know. I had the list and I don't have it in front of me. But uh, but those were some of the big ones. And then, of course, Crane, Crane. and Westgate, which is um, sort of an office park that has been developed down by Crane. And so um, Crane probably, if there were numbers that exist of how many engineers live per like square mile, Crane would be an inordinately high number of yeah. engineers because just, you know, or Blue, uh, Green County would because of Crane. Mm-hmm. Um, e- either you work at Crane or you work as a contractor, uh, subcontractor for Crane at, at this Westgate complex. So it's not, it's it's really interesting if you kind of drive through and explore the county because you'll be incredibly rural and here's a bunch of, you know, cattle and things like that. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, there's, you know, this very updated high tech office complex. Yeah. Westgate's got fiber optics. All kind, they have like free lunch um, on Tuesdays, co work days. So if you don't have an office space, you can all go to Westgate and work and use their Wi Fi for free. And they have a lot of stuff going on at Westgate. Interesting. And I know that um, Green County has a very active economic development um, yes. group. And I know you're involved with that as well. Yeah. Um, Involved, well, I don't know them on the board or anything for mm-hmm. economic development, but I do help out a lot with that. My friend Brianne, she kind of handles all okay. that, and they're really passionate about um, tourism in Green County, growing yeah. the businesses and things like that. And so I think that's really important too. And that's certainly something that if I were looking in an area that I wasn't quite as familiar with, I would want to know what are they doing to um, not just grow the county, but just make sure that the county's future is secured. And it sounds like economically, Green County is working really hard with the different Chamber of Commerces and the uh, economic development, tourism, you know, that the foundation, the Green County Foundation I mentioned earlier, to make sure that the future is secure there. Um, let's talk briefly about, we've got just a couple minutes before our next break, but I want to talk about these legacy projects because I know you were sort of, you did a little bit of research and you were a little bowled over at... How so called these legacy projects? Yeah. So the one of the girls that worked for economic development actually, she helped another woman in Greene County, and we were recognized by the state for the way we handled the bicentennial and the legacy projects. So last year was the two hundredth. Indiana's 200th birthday. Yes. And they were trying to have projects go on all over the um, all over the state to celebrate 200 years. Yeah, we had the the torch bearing. They brought all the children out from school to watch it. Because they ran a torch across the state, yep. I think, or somewhere around the state. And they had, um, so like one of the legacy projects, the sculpture trails was involved. Mm. They did scratch blocks. Every fourth grader in Greene County got to scratch this block or make their own scratch block. And the, they all compile, they make this big mural that an artist in Greene County created that has the tulip trestle and all the different mm-hmm. things that are special to Greene County. And that is in the 4-H Center. So that's one of the legacy projects. I think they made a pin for Greene County as well, like mm-hmm. that you yeah. put on your... You can wear on your lapel. Yeah. And um, and then we've got an article that I think Rachel's going to put up about Bruno the Bison. Yes. was dedicated as a Greene County legacy project, which I think is really cool. Is this like giant life-size sculpture, I guess, of a bison, and it was painted to represent the uniqueness of the county. Um, one side depicts images of Yoho, the general store we were talking about in Salisbury, the Green County Courthouse, um, the Old Clifty Church, the world's largest jack located at the High Lift <laughs> in Bloomfield, the Green County General Hospital, there's a bell in front of the Green County Courthouse, the Scotland Hotel, um, five county high school logos. Um, and that's I, that was out at the Sculpture Trail Garden too. But it's just mm-hmm. kind of a fun project and it was awesome, I think, to see the county, um, all the people in the county sort of get together and come up with these projects because I don't think Monroe County really – Got I'm, that excited about the bicentennial, to be honest. Yeah. Our bicent- Monroe County's bicentennial is this year, or Bloomington's is 
like we became a county or a yeah they had like a festival last week i think for that something street fair yeah all right let's take one last break and when we come back i want to talk just a little bit about some ideas and suggestions on how to get to know um the county better if it's something that you want to investigate as an option for expanding your home buying and living opportunities so stick around you're listening to real real estate today your home for smart real estate Stimulating talk it gets those synapses in the brain firing really fast. All the time. The number one internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com. Are you interested in buying or selling a home? Not sure what the next step is? Deb can help. Go to realrealestatetoday.com and click on Start Here. You'll be asked a few simple questions, and Deb will personally contact you to help answer your real estate questions and connect you with a realtor in her personal nationwide network of realtors. So even if you aren't in Deb's service area, you're guaranteed to find a good match wherever you are. Visit realrealestatetoday.com. What makes a great leader? Most have a vision, one that starts beyond the resources available and continues from that point into developing a solid plan, organization, and company. Leadership issues are discussed each week on VoltCast, illuminating leadership with host Jeff Smith. Jeff has years of experience as a leader and executive coach, and his guests will bring you information that can help a team of any size. Listen every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific, on Voice America Variety. Streaming live, the leader in Internet talk radio, voiceamerica.com. You are listening to Real Real Estate Today. To reach Deb tomorrow or with questions and comments about the show, please send an email to Deb at realrealestatetoday.com. That's Deb at realrealestatetoday.com. Now, back to this week's program. All right, welcome back. We are talking today about uh, exploring Greene County, which is a county directly to the west of Monroe County, and it has somewhat more affordable housing options, and so we're seeing more and more people go out in those directions. Um, I wanted to make sure that we didn't run out of time and talk about um, one of the things that Brittany was telling me about right before the show started, um, and that's this sense of community. I know she's kind of alluded to that and made mention of that, but that is something that is just, you know, in Bloomington, I, I have moments where I kind of feel a sense of community. We're small enough. I drive down the street and I'll see some, you know, I always see somebody I know in another car and you kind of wave or whatever, but there's still a lot of people you don't know. Um, and there's still very sort of distinct, you know, groups, um, where is Greene County small enough that it, it is a little bit more united when it needs to be? Yeah. So you were saying that just in the past week or so, you've been to how many benefit fundraisers? I Last month, I think I had one every single weekend. Yeah. So there was a guy in town. He cuts down trees. He got hurt at work. So there were three different fundraisers put together for him to help raise money so he could support him and his family could support themselves yeah. while he was out of work yeah. because he got hurt. Um, there was another woman that had a brain tumor, and she was going to be out of work for a while as well. She was really young. They had a jam session at the uh, Legion, so everybody brought their guitars, and they sang, and they had a That's silent fun. auction and stuff like that. Um, and then we've had other um, – fundraisers for people, I mean, to help their family Mm -hmm. and people I don't even know, but that's what you go do on the weekend. If there's one going on, that's where you go. That's what you do. Even if you don't know them. Yeah. And then you had another example too, that you were telling me about with a recent storm that we had. Yeah. So in Jasonville last week, there was a storm and it knocked some trees down in a spot where people were planning a a wedding reception and they reached out to the paper and they posted about it. And within an hour, an hour, she had people picking, getting equipment, going to the place to help them cut up these trees and clear it off for their wedding. I know that sounds silly, but I actually have a little bit of a chill, right? <laughs> like I actually got like a little chill because it's like you can see the little goosebumps on me uh, just because that's such a nice thing. And mm. we don't I think we look for that. And, you know, you see it in bigger cities that they're sort of stepping back in some of these suburban developments and trying to create that feeling of community Mm -hmm. um, because I think people are really missing that. And it's nice to know that it probably has never really gone away uh, in Greene County. No, definitely not. I think, I feel like everybody is willing to help whoever they can, however they can. Right. 
and even whether you know them or not, and for free. At that, right. I mean, all these people were willing to come cut up these trees yeah. and take them off for right. at no cost, just right. to help these people. Of course, they probably have wood burning stoves too. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to get to know Green County better, um, you just hit me up, and I'll uh, introduce you to Brittany, and then she can take you around to I'll the take Legion. You on a tour. Yeah, do the big uh, tour. One of the things that they do in Bloomfield, and I know they do it in um, Switz City, is another little town over there, uh, and I think Worthy or Linton as well I'm not sure where else but on Friday nights what do you do we take the golf cart out go right around people have golf carts and they just drive around town in their golf carts and go from house to house and you just kind of go visit people yeah, and say hi and yeah. see their animals so there's like one house with three dogs that come every time so you go by and see them pet their dog <laughs> that is what you do on a nice night in Greene County actually my friend that I go with they were just telling me yesterday they're gearing to get there out of the shop and it's rigged now so it'll be the fastest golf cart in town sweet so we're excited about awesome. that <laughs> awesome. well um if you are interested in learning more about green county i have some suggestions for you one there is a green county daily world newspaper and um, facebook page so you can certainly kind of read about events and uh, i'm sure that all of these fundraisers and uh, activities and goings on you know are advertised mm -hmm. or you know publicized in there but I think go to some of these events and start to talk to the people you know I got the impression like when you went to the sculpture garden uh, last week for that event mm -hmm. you, know, you probably talked to people you hadn't talked to before and you just start to learn a little bit more about um, you know the community in which you live and I think that that's really cool um, and then I had another suggestion you know one of the things that we've talked about with um we did a show uh, last fall with a psychologist and we talked about practicing, doing test runs, doing the drive. If you're afraid the drive is going to be too far, mm -hmm. you know, do the drive, um, like go out to where you think you're going to live and then drive to work, you know, during work hours kind of thing and see how that changes your life. But I had this idea about, you know, there's a ton of Airbnbs in Greene County. I don't know if you've ever looked at them because you have a home, so you don't really need to, right? No, but I do know about there was the cookhouse. Oh, the cookhouse. Yeah, I think that's for sale right now. Yeah. But, um, but I found a really, really cool one that your um, nephews would love. Um, it's a railroad caboose cabin. Where? It's I don't know. Here it is. Like, and it's, I've seen pictures, I d didn't print out when I printed that out, but it's an Airbnb that's a uh, railroad caboose. It's got sleeping for like at least six. It's got a little kitchenette. It's got a half bathroom in the caboose. And then there's a little outbuilding that's like finished. So it's not like an outhouse that has a full bathroom and a washer and dryer. And it's in uh, Springville. I might have to so go Green stay County. there for a weekend. Yeah, and it's really, really cool. It's like super fun. It's got some, you know, upper beds and it's really neat. But my point was that there are a lot of Airbnbs. And think about this. If you were like really like, gosh, I don't know if I can do Greene County. You know, is it too far from where I work, et cetera, et cetera. Why not spend a little bit of money, get an Airbnb for a week and pretend like you live there, do the drive, be involved in the community, mm -hmm. go to the farmer's market, which is usually on Thursday. We have Tuesdays now. Tuesdays. Is yep. You know, do those things. And I mean, that's the beauty. You can find some really inexpensive Airbnbs and, you know, kind of practice living there for a week, just a week and just see what it's like. But I just thought that that train car thing was so cool. That is very cool. Yeah. You have to look, hopefully Rachel can find it maybe and put it up because the picture, it has all these pictures and it was just really, really cool. So... I think that that um, is certainly an option. And then another uh, resource that Brittany suggested is visitgc.com. Yeah. Right? G letters GC. Visitgc.com. They have pages for every single community. What and, to do, what what to buy, where to go, everything you could want to know about Greene County. Yeah. Um, and I think that that can be a good resource as well. But a lot of it's just driving around and realizing, I mean, you're in Bloomfield. There's not, let's see, you have a Dairy Queen. I do. I have a Subway as well. And a Pizza Hut. <laughs> and a few <laughs> other like local restaurants. You have a really good, you know, little Italian restaurant that's mm -hmm. local and has an amazing vibe. We always have lunch there when we're in town. Um, and then Linton is about how far from you? Um, 15 miles or 12 miles, about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So it's just a straight, a straight shot. drive. Yeah. And that's got everything. It's got a goodwill. Yes. Uh, we're so it's good got, way. you know, even more shopping. So there certainly is more to it. And I think, uh, you know, I talk a lot about Eastern Green because that's where I own property and that's where I've sold a lot of properties. Um, I definitely recommend that if you are looking uh, in one of these surrounding counties that you make sure that the realtor that you're working with is someone who is experienced in that county. I would work in Bloomfield and, uh, and 
east of that. Uh, and I'm very comfortable with that. But anything Linton, I've sold in Linton before. I've sold in Worthington before. But I don't feel like I'm an expert. And realtors really have an obligation to at least disclose that to you and say, I can help you and make sure that you're legally <laughs> covered in this purchase. But, uh, you know, I may not know the ins and outs of the community to be able to answer all of your questions. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, some of these areas, you know, like a Salisbury or Bloomfield, you're sort of, you know, equidistant to Bloomington and to Terre Haute and to a lot of other um, locations. So there's a lot of options. Yeah. Uh, you're not just driving over to Bloomington for every single thing that you need. You have other closer options. And so you need to explore those too. Brittany, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I really appreciate it. I hope thank we can you. come up with yet another topic to have you. I hope on so. About. If you have any title work needs. Give me a call. If Give you me. want to visit Bloomfield, I'll take you around. Yeah. Brittany would be happy to show you around and uh, make sure you send us things that are going on in Bloomfield and we'll post them on the Facebook page and make sure people know okay. about them too um, because it's it's a, it's a great option. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be back next week. We're going to talk about Owen County, uh, which is the other county over to the west uh, and what they've got going on over there. So this is Real Real Estate Today, your home for smart real estate. Thank you for tuning in to Real Real Estate Today. Please join your host, Deb, tomorrow for another edition every Tuesday at 12 noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Variety Channel. Until next week, take care of your home. It's one of your most important assets.